You know, the problem with education cannot be, we can't even begin the journey of resolving it if all we're doing is reacting to consequences of what has not been done over time. Because this is what we are faced with. The Ministry of Education has very clear guidelines as to 1A, what the size of a classroom should be. They, they know. And how many students should be in it? 30. Mm. Okay, they, it's, it's known. The Ministry of Education, when you have a rising population like the one we do, which seems to be on the run, should build schools. The Ministry of Education doesn't actually build new schools. They leave the private sector to do that. Okay, now private sector should be monitored to ensure that they meet these standards. They rarely are. So you find classrooms that are the size of a cupboard and you want students to fit in here with a desk and everything. You actually wonder, do they want the students to learn on top of each other or do they? <laughs> now, I am actually being dramatic about it because if you look at just the burst of our population, the government response to it has been the existing schools must continue having as many students as you possibly can cram into the existing spaces. Now, it's a very, very simple understanding that has been proven by research over time. The reason why you are likely to find that there's a lot of unrest in places where people live in cl close proximity like slums is because of the human need for space. It's not even complicated. I'm simplifying this thing. If you have young people who are growing, their minds are growing, the understanding is exploding in their heads and you do not even provide them with what you call that space. And then they have to deal with all these issues, which are consequences of what should be done but is not done. It's always a tender keg. In fact, if you ask me, we are fortunate that most schools don't have the calamities that we keep having. Mm. Because this is something that we've been nurturing. This is something that we ourselves, as Kenyans, have been building. And I say building because parents can demand to see dormitories. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Um, parents can demand to see where it is that the children are learning. Mm. Now, in many cases, Kenyans have what we call, a, I call it a national coping mechanism. Mm. You don't ask too many questions. So long as you're not suffering unduly, mm -hmm. okay? You suspend your rights. Mm. Yes. <laughs> and, and you figure, how can we cope with this? Yes, just we can. Just by. It's the pain. Now, it's not too much. But there's pain. Mm. But let's just move on. Mm. Now, We've institutionalized it. The at least mentality has been institutionalized. Hey, you could at least, you know, you to, yes, at least, at, at least, <laughs> at least, at least, and we keep saying it, and we've internalized it. So mm. now, it requires a calamity of this magnitude for us to say what's happening. But then again, with the coping, we've learned. We go into public mourning, and we really talk. We make noise, <laughs> and we speak, and we speak, and we look at the Education Act, and we talk. Give it a week. It all goes. Ah, it goes. Professor George Bagoha, what did he do? After precious Fresh talent, talent. Mm -hmm. he ordered a crackdown. Inspect all, all schools. schools in the, in the shut Republic. down those that do not meet the standard. Give us a report by the Give 30th of October. Yeah. To date. <laughs> to date. But, but the situations are very intimidating because uh, a parent will try to raise up their hand to ask a question, and then the teacher will cautionary tell them, remember, you are leaving my child with you. Mm. You see, that is so really? intimidating. Yes, this is happening in halls. It has happened in my presence. I have had principals and especially even ladies. These are in schools, public schools? Yes. That, uh, uh. Yes. Private schools don't have that problem. And, and, and you, so you don't question mm. uh, why you are going to the dormitory because as, this, you're in Siasa mm. and you don't like parents who are activists. You will be called at an activist yep. because you are asking to know where your child is sleeping. And nobody wants to be labeled. And I think, um, just to say what we are saying, labeling somebody, uh, Kenyans will fear to be labeled because you are uh, being actually intimidated with your own child mm. that you are leaving Mtotwagu na Mimi. But I think also, you, we have the PTAs in the schools. And if the PTAs are serious in their schools, they are the ones to tell the other parents how the dorm is. So one of the things I will plead with the PTAs, because in Dagoriti North, by the way, for me, education, you don't bring politics. We don't play those games. I always tell, even the teachers, you know, we don't do those things you don't do in school. Because I always tell them, if there is no education, where is this child going? So when you start bringing me all this politics, I'm a politician, yes. 
But in education, they know, uh, even me, I'm a parent. In fact, when I enter at school, all the things of politics is gone. We don't do those things at you stand, at you can come late as a politician, at we allow you, we started a meeting at this time to stop and restart. Never, not in the great, you know. It can never happen. You knew we were coming for a parent's school, a parent's day. We've come, we started. You will find us where you are. We'll introduce you. You sit, we continue. But we cannot stop, give you a time to do a speech. No, not in the great north. But then, you, we have started now uh, embracing that education is the only thing you can give a Kenyan child that will push this child to his destiny, her destiny. And so for me, I want to plead with all PTAs across the country. When you go to school, don't be so excited when you see your politician walking in. Be very serious because what role model are we giving these children? And we want them to go and do their best. I have a problem with only one thing in schools today with teachers, just one. So you, you decide because it is in a slum, break will be like for one hour. So when I walk in there, I ask, so break is supposed to be, as, as per the government, breaks in school is 45 minutes. minutes. Mm -hmm. So what are children doing up to two, uh, w w uh, 12? The bell has rung, they are still in the field. I said no. In, a, in, a, in my constituency, in fact, teachers in my constituency, they know, and me, I don't tell you I'm coming. But then you see, Moshimura, this is where now the issue comes in, right? Your role in Parliament is oversight. Yes, yes, yes. Do you go back to Parliament and present a report and say, this is what is happening in yes. schools in Dagoreti, and well, other members well, come and say, this is the same that's happening in our schools, and it's because of a lack of a quality assurance mm -hmm. council. No, even because for, uh, those are all quality assurance issues. Exactly. It means that these children, their time that they are spending learning is reduced because they are allowed to play for an extra 25 minutes but or 30 you know, minutes. Uh, it's not even the council. Do you know we have officers? A Where? whole department yes. is there. So it's, it's not even about one thing I have said in Kenya. We like forming things, but when I'm given a desk to do my work, isn't it for me to think through and say, okay, I may lack this tool, but I can create this tool and still do my work. But that's the problem, Moshimiwa. But then I know we are not very they are many. They're not being done. Especially in Gava, who yes. will think that way. Gava will want to tell you, I need a budget, I need this, I need this. So me, I ask them, fine. It's the same way we, we, the PTAs will also tell me, we need a budget. But I ask them, you have your representatives in school they come they sit on the board they do all these things they represent the classrooms parents are able to give money to kesha and the other team that money must be shared equally to all of you because all of you are doing activities in school not just teachers but then at the same time mm. we go back to ourselves as as, as kenyans I yeah see. i think the problem is not even all these things we put in place the problem is us Mm. Us, what do we want for our country? What do we want? What we do want, we want, we want people to do their jobs. There's no people. I want. Uh, 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 I don't think there's an appreciation. People need for to do their jobs. There's yes, no I'm saying. Mm. Yes. It's the Kenyan. It's not a people. It is a person called a Kenyan uh, uh, who is supposed to be doing it's an education, her job. It's an education job. officer. It's a headmaster. It is an MP. Is he not a Kenyan? Do your jobs. Is he not a That's Kenyan? That's what we Kenyans want. So All of us. What we, what we, All we of us. Want. Yes. What we want is that. Because you went, the other day I asked somebody, <coughs> did I tell you to go and become a teacher? No. But much more you I took here. it as a career dedicated that you this is my career this I is what i believe in well, i think where we are coming from is i think we we don't have an appreciation for just how bad this thing is no, and we when, do. We, when, when we talk about an education officer for me what it means and pl please stop me if i'm wrong here and let's use dagoretti north as an example if an education officer working within their right let's say of quality and standards yes. goes to give me a school in dagoretti north Gatina Primary. Gatina Primary. Yes. And goes and does an yeah. audit yeah. of how class is happening between the hours of 8, which is when they normally start, or sometimes 7 o'clock, and then 3 in the afternoon, mm -hmm. and sees that there's something wrong. Mm. 
you know, something is just not quite meeting the mark. Mm. Unfortunately, the practice and behavior is, ah, I've gone. See, I've gone. I've gone to the school. Mm -hmm. I've finished. Ah, ni watoto wako angu. Ah, Unajua ni wengi sana hawa. Kama <laughs> <laughs> mwalimu amechoka. <laughs> Wame malifu. <laughs> Wame andika exam. <laughs> It's that's it. That the bare minimum is what is being delivered, and we are okay with that. I dare say that the person who went, Professor Magoha, may God rest his soul, the person who went and inspected at Precious Talent, they told us, saw that there was a problem, yeah. and kept quiet and said, "Ah, I have inspected the school. See, it's still standing, and there's children there. They're in school." They've read today. always the excuse is you see this one is serving a community. It is helping now. So if why I should if I shut down it, this school, down. where will these children go? And know those are the other sides of the, you know the questions that come in. I heard you saying when she was in Parliament about a school in your constituency. I don't know whether it's Gatina, where some construction had started, construction stopped. One of those classrooms, was it you or was it someone else? Classroom had started, classroom had not finished, and now you had to come in and start, you know, initiating, let's complete these classrooms because children, it was Lovington. Lovington, guys. Yeah, yes. because students are here and we have got to finish. Lovington, guys. And there is no accountability for what ought to have happened that didn't happen. And because there's nobody to demand accountability, but it is the same now. problem of, if we look at a, na take a national outlook, it doesn't matter where you look. Yeah. Because there's no insistence on accountability, people are getting away with daylight robbery and murder basically yeah, yeah. because there's nobody to push and say hold on a minute eric you were there did you do your job somebody's reminded me of a story that we gave last year a guy's job was to walk into a factory every single day go to the switch check the temperature is supposed to be 23 he makes sure it's 23 if it's 22 or 24, 24. he reports that's his job. He understands that that is what he's supposed to do every single day. Because if he doesn't, something is going to go wrong. Now, unfortunately, what has happened is that somebody has been checking. Things have been going wrong. But we've allowed them to keep going wrong until the place where we are today. Children are dying. Education is not being delivered in the manner in mm -hmm. which it ought to be. Capitation is not being sent. There are fake schools. There are fake students. There are fake accounts. And it's okay in what warped world... Is it okay? That's my question. So, my only biggest fight with Ministry of Education is just one. Before we even talk about all these other things, can they allow every child in Kenya, every, does not matter whether you are in Abed school, whatever school you are, can you first have a name number? A number that says, I am a child, six years old, I have joined school. It does not matter whether you are in which school, but first you have joined school. So that you start, we start, let's account for the numbers we have, the children we have, those who are going to school. Then from there on, when we talk of capitation, even when somebody comes here and says, okay, the budget is 600 billion, but you are able to say each child, mm -hmm. according to our NEMIS number and data, we have 2 million, mm -hmm. 5 million. Mm -hmm. This is the budget. By capitation, each child will be taking this amount. So if you want to come in as somebody who wants to assist to do, just know this child has this amount. You can assist on this. You can assist on uniform. You can Because th that's how the gray area starts. That's where the gray area is completely covered by the ministry. And so even if we say we are giving them $600 billion, we have no idea how we are counting is the 600 billion for children capitation how many primary how many nobody will tell you we've made it You're always given we've a used an, a, a, an excuse of saying they don't have uh, like in 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 the same schools of the slums you're talking about mm. you realize many of them don't have birth certificates yep. no so the mm. ministry so have taken advantage mm. If there are only 200 with birth certificates, that's the capitation that comes to a sent. school that has 3,600 kids. Mm. And so you ask, why would you do that? Then the other mistake we did as politicians is that I go and build schools. I have built schools, 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 schools. You have some schools that have 100 kids. We have others that have, I don't know, less. Mm. And we have refused to accept it was wrong. Because you have taken now teachers, 400 kids, and yet there's a school not very far that has more than 700 children, less teachers. 5,000. But you will be screaming to TSA and saying, I want teachers. Yet when you are planning to build a school, you must put in all these 
indicators that I, as I build the school, I will need teachers, I will need uh, staff to come and support these children. So, to be honest, we also did a mistake. Mm -hmm. And when we are going through CBC, we must try and ask ourselves those questions and deal with those mistakes because we are just spending money. Now, you are supposed to now ensure this school is good, but it doesn't have children. So how do you do that? But when you ask, um, um, Mwishmo will tell you, the clan on that side cannot school in the clan on this side. Mm. Because I sit in the city, yeah, mm. I sit in the city of committee, it's very sad. You go down there, they tell you. Then I ask them, but high school, you're sitting together. <laughs> Yeah, you're going high school together. There's no high school for your clan. But why will, is it in primary you want to have your clan in your own school, your own school. and this other clan in the other school? So the, all this, as we speak, we have to be very honest, as you say. Yes, we have wronged. We have wronged by making uh, education to become politics. Yeah. We wronged there also. Yeah, as, a, as a country, hmm. it was very wrong. But then the ministry also, even today, what the ministry has built as a classroom. I wrote to Bellio the other day. I said, I'm about to bring down what you build because it is so as you were explaining it. It, it is standards. very, uh, uh, yeah, you can't even understand. So were you building just to finish or what was the real, real agenda? You build a school and I want you to visit Lavington because we have not removed in, even though we have put we, 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 Lavington, Lavington girls, it's just there. <laughs> oh. And look at that classroom Ministry of Education did for us. Mm. At that time, there was no stairs to go there. There was nothing. So it's a classroom It was the first hanging floor, like this. But no stairs. No stairs. <laughs> right now is when we have come to put in stairs so that we, we can use. Now, when we build the ones for CDF, the standard now goes, I don't know where. You look at it, it's in the middle of two classrooms, you're, you're wondering, so do we bring it down? What do we do for it to come to this level? Do you know we what have. you've just described, Mishimua? <laughs> you've actually answered the question that we sought to look at when we're talking about the state of our education. That right there, you've painted the perfect picture of what our education system has become. Yeah. It's, sh it's in shambles. So, so I think systemic uh, failures. Yes, my uh, uh, Yes, I, I think I, I wanted to. There's something she put in, and I don't want to interrupt her when she was talking. Mm. And this was about um, the, 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 the money collected by Kesha. These are not welfare for teachers. Mm. And uh, there's also money collected by Kepsha. He was say, so, so, talking about, about it being shared. But the act says. It, in the, one of the rules of the, the Part Association is this is this is the Basic Education Act. Um, Six. Mm. Yes, yes, mm. 2013, six, eh? and six. Yes. Um, the parent are the ones who are given the mandate even to collect the, the, that money. Yeah. <laughs> discuss, <laughs> and they recommend, see, rec discuss and recommend measures for the welfare of the people. That is one of them. And then in earth, they say, undertake and they oversee development projects on behalf of the parent association. A again, and the moral values. Yeah, yeah, yes. And also, uh, the panda mandated to, to to explore ways to motivate the teachers and the pupils and to improve their performance in both the uh, academic and co curricula They are supposed to collect money, but now money is collected by other welfares. And in the presence of this act, which I would say that has been raped, mm. abused mm. by other people. In the presence of members of parliament, because we have a basic education, uh, we have no, a, no. We, we also have we, we also have a, we also have a, a, a committee for education yeah, in the parliament, in parliament. Yeah. that is supposed to see this is executed. It's the oversight. Uh, it is executed, mm. but as here we are in Akwagimaya, basically as a, as a body, and uh, and of course the the other people who are pseudomonas, my for lack of better word, and and you you find that they are correcting money, they are correcting money for activities that is supposed to be actually uh, executed by the, the parent association, and they, they take the money for themselves, for keeps. They go for, uh, for yes. the conferences, 
they invite the president and they protect they, they make it political so that even you know the, even the president and the, the the vice president had come so mm. so to debate other people but what i'm saying is that if what you said i'm, I'm supporting you actually mm. if that money has been shared as mohimio has been said for all the activities yeah, and the key right. and the key and pivotal uh, activities are those ones that are supposed to be carried by the parent mm. because the parent are supposed to oversee for their should because the ones they are parent some of the mps might have been parent but might be grandfathers they might not be having children in school but what really? what, <laughs> what, what i'm saying what i'm saying as a parent who have children in school <laughs> as a parent who has an alpha an alpha generation mm. as a parent who has an alpha generation i should be very eloquent that we are we, we, we are we are being uh disowned by 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 our own by our own uh, by our own people and by our parliamentarians because an act is supposed to be implemented imagine an association without funding an association that treasury doesn't give a single cent how would you say that we are going to oversee uh education in this country but let me ask this <laughs> so you, we are the parents you know all of us here are parents yeah i think without fair using um let me say we are the key stakeholders. You see education. Parents are the key stakeholders. If parents decide today in Kenya, I want home learning for my child. So where will a teacher go? Mm. Because the home learning nowadays, we have different innovations that they will use. They will even go on Zoom and say, now my child will be learning with a class in London. What will the teacher do? So teacher must know the first person you must take care of is the parent who brings you the child. Because he's, he or she is key for you to have that child in school and to call it a school. Mm. So for, uh, why I'm saying that is that mm. as all your PTAs, you must just go to every school and put in and just say, look, we shall be ha these are our activities. We shall be doing this per region, per whatever, and uh, but the, the more importantly, is be more proactive. You see, the way we're exactly, saying everybody yeah. should do their job. Yeah. If you're in the parents' association, do your job, Maina. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In Parliament, I do have your to job. do my job. All right. So in Parliament, mm -hmm. I will go yes and ask the Education Committee, why is it the Quality Assurance uh, Council, Council has, not has, uh, has not been established mm -hmm. ever since 2013 when the Act was passed? Mm -hmm. What is the issue? Yes. And then number two. We have to ask ourselves also, because this is where we, we sometimes, um, you see all these things we create, mm. you know, this committee of this, this committee, that's how we refuse to do work. Because we throw the game ball, oh, it was your committee, oh, it was this committee. Those are some of the things that we've got, are putting... We've got to end there. Yeah, uh, we, we, we find ourselves mm. missing the ball, because everyone is blame gaming the other. They have known there's a loophole. See, when you have 10 committees, you'll have a loophole, even you in your office. When you are doing all these departments, you have to make sure your circle where you are delivering can come to the end without having loopholes. Too many mouths and yes. you can shut none. But exactly. it is a large exactly. member of parliament, the Gorit North, and Dr. Maina Wagaiduru, Secretary General of the Parents Association, Kembu County. Thank you very much for joining us. It's a minute past nine. In the next hour, we talk about disaster preparedness in our schools. Keep it here.